so many flutists, this is, oh my gosh, band flutists, they just default to this one articulation. It's sort of this legato connected thing that they do, or worse yet, they don't tongue at all. It's what I call the who articulation. Who, 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 everything's who. Written. I tell my students, if you don't play the proper articulation, just like if you play a note that's out of tune, to me, that's a wrong note. And it's a challenge for most booters to make that distinction. I give them the same line. Okay, now we're going to do staccato for these four bars. Now we're going to do legato for these four bars. You want them to be able to make those differences. And to a lot of young flutists, and sometimes even college students, it's a revelation. It's how they use the tongue, and it's the amount of air speed they put behind that articulation. So it's how hard they, it's how hard they, they actually, you know, when they tongue, it's how hard that it hits the roof of their mouth and how much air speed they put behind the tongue. That's going to give you a staccato versus a legato versus a marcato versus an accent, those kinds of things. Vibrato is an advanced technique. And the reason I put this in what seems like a more rudimentary book um, is because every single boot or clinic I've ever done, from the tiniest of tiny flute toddler on up, asks me, and I'm quoting a very little child here, how do you do the wobbly thing? Here's the kicker about vibrato. It is such an amazing tool to teach a student how to move air, how to get really quick air speed. This is something that is just so essential to a flutist, to create an exciting line, to move a line forward, to move a phrase forward. Vibrato is a wonderful tool for that. So I advocate using it from the time a, flute, a flutist can start playing. Now you should know how to play without vibrato as well, but since in my 15 years of booting, 15, 20 years of booting, I can tell you it comes up every time I do a flute boot, every time. They want to skip to that page. It is such a magical thing, which I think is wonderful because it does nothing but improve their tone quality, their use of air and air speed, and it does nothing but benefit the flutist. So I'm happy to teach it to them. I can teach them to do, a, to do a waiver, to do that vibrato waiver in five minutes. Now, I can't teach them to master the art of vibrato in five minutes, but I can teach them the vibrato technique. I have them doing it through the owl technique. I have them hoo, hoo, hoo. I have them doing it like an owl. And once they understand it's here, they're off to the races. There's one very important rule about vibrato. You, you just don't vibrate generally through a moving line. You do not vibrate through a fast moving line. It's inappropriate. You vibrate on slow notes, notes that are held. And I do make that statement in the manual. I do make that clear. And I also make clear what the industry standard is as far as speed of the vibration. I, I advocate between 60 to 69, metronome marking 60 to 69, five waivers per beat. If you listen to a lot of major artist recordings, including my own, you will hear they don't change the speed of the waiver. They change the width of it, but they don't change the speed. So when it's soft, they don't go, uh, 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 and then when it's soft, uh, uh, they don't do that. What they do is with the character of the music, they change the width of it. So perhaps if you saw the wave, it'd be really wide like this, smaller. And if it's Debussy, maybe it's a smaller wave. But the speed in general, we stay within a very narrow range of speed of the wave.